Do you carry a gun for your own self-defense, concealed carry holder, police officer, security guard, military? A lot of people use those handguns to protect themselves, but we all know we should be better with them than we are. So here's your chance. This is the first in a series of videos I'm doing on armed self-defense. Join me now. Hello folks, my name is Dick Fairburn. I'm starting these YouTube videos about armed self-defense because over 40 years as a law enforcement officer and a firearms trainer, I've learned a lot about what happens in a real gunfight. And I know that we need to improve our skills if we're going to defend ourselves, defend our homes, defend our families, um, with, especially with a handgun. They're the most difficult kind of firearm to use. Part of my experience for over 35 years has been as a writer for police magazines and police websites. Uh, I just recently left that field and joined uh, Concealed Carry Magazine as their carbine editor. So the experience of researching, training, and writing with a lot of feedback from, from folks in the field has given me some, I think, unique insight into what happens in gunfights and the kind of training we need to do for ourselves to be prepared for that. Over the course of my career, I've analyzed over 300 officer-involved shootings, and in many of those, I've had the chance to sit down and interview the officers who were involved. Uh, and I've seen some very, very interesting commonalities through a lot of those things. And when, when we develop those patterns, we can use that to train ourselves very effectively. One of the more successful things I've done in my career, uh, I've spent over 21 years at the Illinois State Police Academy as an instructor. One of the most important research projects I did in my career uh, at the Illinois State Police Academy was testing for new pistols in 1999. In, in 1967, the Illinois State Police adopted a Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatic pistol. They were the first major agency in the United States to adopt semi-auto pistols. Everybody else was still using revolvers. They'd had problems with that pistol, but they'd had a lot of success, success with the pistol, but they were willing to look at a new technology. And uh, so in 1999, we tested for new pistols, but before we did that, I looked at a 10-year window of the state police officer-involved shootings, and, and what I found was startling. Their hit rate for that 10-year period was 11%, the lowest I've ever seen documented. So in other words, 89% of the, the rounds they fired at a bad guy didn't hit the bad guy. They missed. The, the sample of bad guys shooting at them was too small to really be statistically valid, but it was in, very interesting that their hit rate was also right around 11%. So you've got this weird combination of very well-trained troopers shooting at bad guys who we assume have no training at all, but they're hitting at about the same rate. And the academy commander, when we, when we found this information, he said, what are we doing wrong? And I said, sir, I think the problem is for 40 years you've been training your, your troopers to go to the next quarterly pistol match rather than to go to the next gunfight. Uh, a lot of their, their training tactics were, were very antiquated. For an example, if they had a malfunction with their pistol during a qualification course, the troopers were trained to put their non-firing hand up in the air, hold the pistol downrange in a safe direction, and wait for the range officer to come by and fix the malfunction. In other words, the troopers did not ha know how to identify or rectify the problem with their pistol. They had essentially trained them that if they had a malfunction in a gunfight, they were probably going to raise that non-firing hand and wait for someone to come fix their pistol for them. That's, go, that's training to go to a pistol match. That is not training to go to a gunfight. And so when we adopted the new pistol, uh, after all the testing, they ended up with the Glock 22 and 40 caliber, uh, 23 for um, some folks. We gave them a completely new training program to go with it. When they transitioned from one pistol to the other, they also transitioned from pistol matches to gunfight type training. Not too long before I retired, we took another look at the performance of the troopers out on the street. 
and that 11% hit rate with handguns had gone up to 62% hit rate, which is the highest I've ever seen documented. So we learned a lot in that process, and I think what we learned was how to train cops to be ready to go into harm's way. Uh, the most, as, as Dave Grossman, Colonel Grossman says, it's, it's a toxic, corrosive environment. It's combat, but that's what you're going to face if you're going to protect yourself, your home, your family, with a gun. The problem is gunfights are nothing like the training range. Even in practical comp competition shooting like uh, USPSA or IDPA, that's the most practical kind of shooting you can do. It's still really very different from what you're going to see in a gunfight. When we train new cops, within a matter of a few hours, we can have them hitting that man-sized silhouette target 100% of the time from seven yards. Draw, fire, keep them all on the target. And, and probably 70 to 80% of those hits are not only going to be on the man-sized target, they're going to be center mass. They're going to be where they need to be to, to do the most damage and, and hopefully bring about the, the most rapid stop. So if we can train you to be a 100% shooter in a couple of hours at seven yards, and, and, and you know to, to veer off a little bit, why, why, seven, why is the seven yard line used in police ranges? Because for a very long time, 50 years or more, the statistics have shown us that the vast majority of police gunfights occur at 20 feet or less, hence the seven yard line. When we look at statistics for civilians, concealed carry people here in the United States, those numbers are about the same, 20 feet or less, perhaps even closer for civilians, because cops are trained to, to keep as much distance as they can from their potential adversaries. So if we can train you to hit 100% in a couple of hours, why is it that back in, in the days of revolvers where you only had six shots, cops would routinely miss with all six rounds at seven yards in a gunfight? 100% performance on the range, 0% performance on the, on the street. What's the difference? You have to train yourself in several different aspects to be prepared for a gunfight rather than a day at the range. I, I wrote a book after we were done with that program called Building a Better Gunfighter, and it outlines the training program we use to transition that department from pistol matches to gunfighting. And what we identified was three major components that you need to be skilled in. The first is marksmanship. And that's what we're going to talk about first. Marksmanship is sight alignment, trigger control, putting the hits on the target. That's 95% plus of what you do in handgun training. Whatever kind of big fancy school you want to go to and pay a lot of money, most of your time is still going to be spent on marksmanship. But what we found was marksmanship skills were probably the least important in surviving a gunfight because most of them are 20 feet or less. The statistic where I told you they're 20 feet or less, for that same 50 year period or more since before I was training firearms, we said it, that, that a typical gunfight was the rule of threes. It would probably be at three yards or less. It would involve three rounds being fired on average and would probably be over in about three seconds. These things are close, they're fast, they're very dynamic and they don't typically require a lot of marksmanship skill. Now there are outliers, of course. Uh, last year in Indiana, a young man with a concealed carry permit interrupted an active shooter in a mall. And he hit this guy multiple times at 40 yards, which is a long distance for a pistol shot. A number of years ago in Dallas, Texas, a mounted police officer was holding the horses while his partner went to get the trailer at the end of their shift Yet, with a Glock 45 caliber pistol, he engaged a guy who was shooting into the front of a, uh, a courthouse. He engaged him at 104 rounds and hit him single-handed at over 100 yards. So long shots do occasionally happen. It's good to have the kind of skill you need with marksmanship to deliver that, but that's you know way less than 1% of the, the cases you're ever going to deal with. Normally, they're fast, and marksmanship is not the problem. The second of the M's skills you need is mechanics. It's what I call mechanics. It's how to load the gun, unload the gun, keep it running in a gunfight, clear malfunctions, and be prepared for the operation of the pistol. 
This has to be learned so deeply that it's in your midbrain. It's literally programmed into the computer side of your brain so that it can make these things happen without your forebrain, your, your conscious thought process being involved. So marksmanship is the first we're going to talk about. Mechanics we're going to talk about because you've got to keep this system running uh, in case of problems. And the last of the three M's is mindset. The mental preparedness you have to step over that threshold, pull the trigger when the sights are on a living target, and potentially take another human life. And that's not an easy step to take over that threshold, but it's something you have to be prepared for. So we're going to learn marksmanship, we're going to talk about mechanics, we're going to talk about mindset, and probably the inverse of that order are the things that are going to keep you alive in a gunfight. Your mindset is going to be most important. Keeping that gun running is going to be an essential skill. And if you do those two things, and you are prepared for those two things, the marksmanship will probably very, be very easy. So that's what we're going to talk about in this series. I'm going to do several series uh, going over what I talk about in Building a Better Gunfighter. And hopefully this will prepare any of you to do a much better job should that awful day come to you. Okay, we've got them both here now. You ready? Bud got one. Ginger got one. Uh-huh. Oh, she missed it. She usually gets them, doesn't she, bud? Mm -hmm. Okay, girl, last one. Ready? You ready? Yeah! That's all there is till next time. <laughs>